renminbi, it's become a globally known and traded currency. But what does this mean for the rest of the world? Joining me down the line is Patrick Chervanek, Chief Strategist at Silvercrest Asset Management to find out. Patrick, how will the internationalization of the renminbi influence world trade? I think that there's a lot of hype surrounding uh, the internationalization of the renminbi. A lot of people that you hear talking up the internationalization of the renminbi are the banks and they see new products to sell. I think there are a lot of obstacles to uh, the renminbi playing a, a more meaningful role in the global economy. But are we finally going to see China opening up to the rest of the world? Well, China has opened up considerably on the trade front, although there are still issues uh, in terms of market access into China in certain industries. But I think you're going to see China continue to open up. The question is whether that leads to China being an exporter of currency, which is really what needs to happen for its currency to play a major international role. China would either have to invest a considerable amount abroad, much more than it is today, or it would have to run chronic trade deficits. And right now, I don't think Chinese policymakers are comfortable with either. So do you think trade ties will liberalize between China and the rest of the world? So there's been a lot of talk about China being excluded from things like uh, the Trans-Pacific Partnership, TPP, which is the U.S. trade agenda. But I don't think that's really the intention. The intention is actually, like with WTO, to set out an example for China of this is what can be yours if you move, uh, as you said, you want to towards more open markets. And if you do that, then uh, then you can be part of this. Well, the yuan on the world stage. Do you think it will change the liquidity status of other major currencies? I think that's premature to say. Um, right now, the world is concerned about dollar liquidity uh, because we're coming off of a very unusual uh, state of affairs where the Fed has been pumping money in. Now uh, we're in an environment where Japan has been pumping money into its economy and the European Central Bank has been pumping money in. So the world is actually awash in liquidity right now. There is some concern about what happens when the Fed reigns in that liquidity. But I think the renminbi right now only plays a very small role in that overall picture. What do you think is holding back the renminbi? The key issue that almost nobody talks about is accessibility. For any currency to be a global currency, it has to be both desirable and accessible. It's desirable as a trade currency because people want to buy what China is selling. It is less desirable as investment currency because China's capital markets are small and very heavily restricted. China has to provide the world with renminbi. It has to be a renminbi exporter. And the only way to do this would be by uh, investing a great deal abroad, much more than it does today, or by China running chronic trade deficits, and it does not seem ready to do either of those two things. And is converting foreign money in China an issue? Because when I was living there, I certainly know that foreign money was capped. There has been a lot of excitement recently about full convertibility of the renminbi. And certainly the Chinese have been talking that up as a goal. China's central bank, the PBOC, I think it is their goal. But whether the rest of the policy establishment in China has really wrapped their minds around what that means is less clear. Because if you have free flows of currency, if your currency is fully convertible, then you have to give up control either over the exchange rate or your domestic interest rate. And right now, China wants to control both. Right now, with, in the midst of a slowing economy at the end of a huge investment boom, China is grappling with a lot of unrecognized bad debt in its banking system. So to open up its banking system to free currency flows, I think it's really going to be quite challenging. Finally, how should large players in the finance industry prepare for the seismic changes this could create? Right now, they need to watch and wait and see just how much China is willing to adapt uh, its own stance and its own growth model to the needs of, of supplying the world with currency. That would be a very dramatic change in China's relationship with the rest of the world. I think it could bring some very positive things, but I don't think it's a done deal in terms of China really being willing and able to go down that path.